Hey guys, today we're playing Minecraft again, and like I said last episode, today we're going to be starting the industrial tree farm. So this is pretty huge, like out of all items in the game, you have your stone, your wood, and your food, and your redstone. You know what I'm saying? Like this wood, this is something that's pretty important, it's pretty big, and I definitely want to make this big, so I'm going to spend this entire episode on it. Um, so we're going to start by kind of having the trail of the wood so where i started that's gonna what that's where the wood is going to end and that's where the tnt is gonna blow it up and all the way here is where, where we're gonna stand and plant the saplings and obviously the wood is going to be grown here and then pushed aside so i guess i can kind of explain the tree farm as i'm going so it's a very simple premise um you have your one spot where you plant your saplings like we just like hold right click and plant your saplings the trees grow the pistons push the wood out and then obviously pistons can push like I forgot this uh, exact amount of blocks but it can push a certain amount and you push them far away and then in the new update uh, the TNT duper got introduced again so now we can dupe TNT but most importantly in the update when TNT blows up whatever it blows up those items actually drop so that's kind of the main thing with this farm. Now you can see me here building um, a double piston extender. So this is what's going to actually push the wood out. And then I'm going to be building other piston extenders on the other two corners to kind of zigzag the wood all the way to our collection system, which we're going to build in a little bit. But here so far, all we built, this is going to be like the little cage of where the trees are going to be built. That's a double piston extender. And back here is where I'm going to be building my redstone clock. So if you guys watched last episode, I built a bamboo farm and I used the Etho hopper clock. And I'm going to be using that exact same thing again. So you can see here, two pistons in each other, comparators, block, redstone, and two sticky pistons. So here you can see me starting to build the redstone wiring up to the pistons. Now, just a quick thing with this tree farm is I, I spent nearly like maybe like five, six hours and then another five, six hours in like another day. So a lot of things I built and changed throughout the episode. So if you're using this as like a guide or tutorial, I wouldn't. Um, it's not very linear. Like this redstone all gets changed later. Now, if you guys want me to build um, or if you guys want me to make a tutorial for this, I can. Um, I'm more than happy to do that, you guys. You guys gotta let me know in the comments if you really, really want it. Um, so, and just a few other notes. So right now I'm building the second piston extender to push it sideways, and I'm gonna build one more here to push it uh, towards the TNT exploding system. So just a quick note: um, this isn't a 100% efficient tree farm. Saplings do get lost in here, um, and there isn't a sapling collection system. I talked a lot about this in the last episode. Um, but there are bigger designs uh, which have two layers of uh, hoppers and with pistons pushing around. So there are leaf crushers and those uh, saplings after the leaves are crushed get dropped down. So there's like an automatic um, sapling collection system with this design, which just another quick note, I know I said this last episode, this is my own design. I didn't look at any videos. Obviously like I looked at like how to do like the TD duper and stuff, but this is my own design and a flaw with my own design which I only realized after I built it was I only built one ring of hoppers instead of two so with the one ring of hoppers you can't actually have uh, a leaf crushing system that's very efficient so this is purely just a tree farm and it does not have a sapling collection system so it does need to be sustained by saplings from a different source and last episode we built that sapling uh, farm just for this because we can't do it from this episode or we can't get it from this farm so you can see me here doing really really crappy redstone just to get these pistons to work and like i said this redstone is going to be completely changed later in but you could start uh seeing you here you can really start seeing the framework of the farm going we've got the place where we're going to plant uh we've got all the pistons set up to push and we've got the hopper uh, going. So you can see here, I'm just stretching the redstone wire. So what needs to happen is I need the double ex double piston extender to push the wood, and then I need my other two pistons to push. This is very important, because if my other two push first, um, the wood is just gonna get 
smashed into the piston and it's not going to work very well. So it's very important that your timing is a little bit later on the second and third piston pushers. Here I'm starting to build the sapling system. So basically how this farm works is you fill up your inventory with a single item and you leave one slot for your saplings. And what it's going to do, the hoppers are going to bring the saplings around and then the droppers are going to shoot them forward and then a dispenser or a dropper is going to shoot the sapling at you. If your inventory is full, it's just going to drop down back into the hopper and go around the system. And obviously if you need a sapling in your inventory, it'll drop it into your inventory. So it's basically just going to be doing a circle into the hoppers, up the droppers, and then it's going to be dispensed to you. And if you're full, you're going to go back into the hoppers and just going to make loop and loop and loop. So this way the saplings don't get lost. Here you're seeing me very quickly build the collection system so if any saplings drop down in the farm itself they drop down and here I'm building the TNT duper. Um, so once again another etho hopper clock, I, this is probably my favorite redstone thing is this hopper clock because it's so small so simple so easy to use and very uh, resource uh, easy. So here I'm building the TNT duper itself so it's a pretty simple build. All you want to do, you can follow along. So one sticky piston, you want to make slime in the shape of an L, and then you want to go to the, this side, one, and then another L. Um, then you're, what you're going to want to do is place a piece of coral right there, and it's going to dry up. You're going to want to put a, a, any type of fence over there, and then there's only two more things that we have to do. So you need an activator rail, a mine cart, and a piece of TNT, and you're done. So you're going to want to go up here and obviously link up uh, the redstone, but we need an activator rail, which I think, no, I do have it. Okay. So a detector rail, not an activator, a detector rail, put that right there. We can put a mine, except don't drop your mine cart. That was my mistake in the video, but I, I thought it was kind of funny. So grab your mine cart, zoom all the way back up here. That was a pretty good flight. So place your mine cart right here. And then lastly, place your TNT um, right below um, the stone fence. And then it's done. All you need to do is give it power and the TNT is going to kind of be like sucked into the coral. And then every time it goes back and forth, it's going to drop a piece of TNT. So this is unlimited TNT. Now this also can be built to actually move. So you can clear entire areas with this, which I haven't done yet, but that is something that you can do. And you can see it here. So every time the hopper clock goes off so the first time it's just gonna collect the TNT but then every single time it's going to drop a piece of TNT and like I said at the bottom basically the wood is going to get pushed right where this TNT blows up and then since now with the recent change that items now drop from the TNT again the wood is just gonna be dropped down into the collection system you can see it working right here and I did build build the TNT duper really really high because I need it to drop down all the way into uh, where the wood is. Now you can build a system up at your TNT duper with like a piston and a thing to like make it stop so it only drops like 5-10 blocks if you wanted to but to me it was just easier just to go really high. So here is where I'm building the collection system and I'm using a good old like waterfall system again so I only have to use a certain amount of water blocks and a certain amount of hoppers. So what I do is I build a square and then I build a bigger square, bigger square, bigger square and then leave water around the edges so it kind of all flows down into here. And the reason I made it into the shape of a bowl is just because I wanted to make a very big collection system because I didn't know how far the TNT was going to kind of be pushed. Uh, you can see me here, I'm working on the last like lip of the bowl here and then you're gonna see me place a lot of water so yeah this farm and I should probably talk a little bit about because if you guys are gonna build it there's some very important things once again there's no leaf crushing system just a quick story so obviously you guys have noticed that I'm talking over a time lapse this is something that I built and now I'm explaining over it after I built this, I did try to implement a leaf crushing system and this is why I'm so confident in telling you guys that this can't be built because I tried for at least like 3-4 hours to build it and there was just too many complications with um, the pistons pushing each other and then breaking the redstone of the pistons themselves and then a lot of like the pistons would get like powered in the wrong places and they couldn't be pushed 
and, and at the end of like obviously the the, um, the time lapse I did make a few small modifications to it which I'll actually do live which is nuts at this point because I don't do that like much anymore surprisingly um, so you can see me here I'm working on the collection system so if any saplings do fall they we do collect them and you can see I place the dispenser right there so that is where the bone meal is going to get dispensed and obviously I'm gonna be on the other side right clicking with saplings and I'm gonna be planting it so with this dispenser at this moment I only built one hopper feeding into it but I will add a second hopper just so we can get double the amount of uh, bone meal into there because I'm going to be using quite a bit of bone meal on these trees because each tree takes a good bit of bone meal so here I'm building the clock for the dispenser itself now unlike the pistons and stuff which I needed to be every like 10 seconds I need this dispenser to be going as fast as humanly possible because I need it to grow the tree before the pistons come back so you can see me here I'm filling my inventory now here's this is an issue where I ran into you can see kind of how high I am compared to the dirt so what so you can see here the wood does grow and it gets pushed aside um, but this happens where the trees grow and block my path to where I can collect saplings so what I did is I here I lower um, the entire sapling system so I'm kind of flush with the ground and what happened was grass still grew in front of me so you're, you're gonna see in a little bit what I do is I place a stair in an L shape in front of me so I only have a little bit of gap and then I place a hopper in front of me this way a grass block can't grow in front of me so my sapling clicking will never get blocked which is super super nice and once again I need these hoppers and droppers to go as fast as possible so I built the second clock super super fast obviously these clocks don't interfere with each other so it technically doesn't matter and you can see me here trying to provide power since I did have to drop in I didn't want to move my dispenser I had to power a couple more droppers but that's pretty easy you can see here I'm testing it and I'm making sure the redstone torch goes all the way through the system and it does so now all I need to do is uh, power this last dropper here and guys like I said this just this did the entire process took like five hours and a lot of mistakes were made and a lot of corrections if you want if you guys want a straightforward uh, like tutorial for this farm I can do that just say it in the comments and I can do that for you now remember this isn't a 100% efficient there are 100% efficient farms you can see me here testing it so if you're like really dedicated to getting this done I would 100% go to someone like mango or mumbo jumbo and use their industrial tree farms because in theirs they do have a leaf crushing system and your saplings can get fed back into you so you can use it for longer you don't have to get outside saplings but in this case this is a more compact and a little bit um, <clears throat> less professional setup but it still works I've tested this and I've gotten double chests and double chests of wood from here so it works all you need to do is just collect the saplings which can be a little bit of a hassle <clears throat> so you can see me here this is where I kind of got frustrated that um, leaves kept growing in front of me and it would stop my planting of saplings you can see there I planted uh, the stairway so I stopped getting blocked and in a second here I'm going to be putting that hopper and here also I get the second um, second bone meal so right now you can see only one hopper is actually going into the dispenser that's a little bit slow so I'm gonna be building <clears throat> a second place where bone meal can go in because I don't want that dispenser to run out of bone meal <clears throat> and another little fix that I'm gonna need to do if you guys see I shoved the bone meal into uh, the dispenser but there's actually a hopper below it for the collection so that's a hopper that I'm going to remove in a second here that's a pretty good distinction but you can already see here I'm standing there it's pushing the wood out you can see that the, the TNT is blowing up the wood and it is being collected um, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing here I think I might be fixing the redstone or actually what I'm doing here is I'm actually extending the pistons up because I'm seeing wood can grow higher so I'm making another double uh, double extender so um, I can collect more wood out of this and 
like I said, I'm going to go back to live because I did make a few tweaks and one of the tweaks is actually a second TNT duper to make sure to get all the blocks up top I and the redstone was made better and stuff. Uh, but you can see me here um, building, rebuilding the redstone to the piston. So I tried to make it a little bit more compact. But funny enough, I actually build the reds. I rebuild the redstone a third time. This is one of the big things where I, I, I was hoping I wouldn't do, but yeah. So the the redstone I rebuilt a couple times, and here you can see me build building like the sapling storage. So this farm does go through saplings pretty quickly. So you're gonna need a large chunk of saplings. That's really the biggest downfall of this entire farm is the fact that you need a lot of saplings, but getting a lot of saplings is hard and this doesn't provide you with a lot of saplings but um like i said or maybe i said this last episode of this episode everything in this world here is upgradable and i'm gonna i'm never gonna leave this world this is gonna be my one world forever so i'm definitely planning in the future to take down this tree farm and build another one when i have more time and the next one will have leaf crushers the only thing that's kind of scary with this farm is the fact that um, there is a chance that these mechanics will get broken so the fact that the TNT when it blows up it drops the items that's just something that was in a recent update and they could get rid of it again because they did get rid of it before I'm hoping it doesn't so this tree farm could be broken in the near future now it's not a bug they did this on purpose but um, Mo Yang has a tendency to do things that kind of revert it back and just kind of play with it. So for now, as of 1.14, I think 0.1, 2, or 3, I forgot, um, this does work. And yeah, we'll see. Hopefully they don't break it. Here you can see me. This is uh, basically the farm is done. I'm just doing the last couple cosmetic steps. I'm going like I'm building around the redstone so you can't see the redstone. Um, yeah, so this is all cosmetic. The farm itself is done. So um, we have the area where the trees grow. We have the collection system. We have the TNT pushing it out and then pushing it forward, sideways, and back all the way to our collection system. And then our TNT duper stopping TNT on it. So the farm itself is a very simple concept. The redstone isn't super hard. You just need a good bit of like time and dedication to it. So here you can see that um, I did do a little bit of more decoration off camera. I added the glass up there so I can kind of look down to see uh, where, like what's going on in there. Cause I want to see if something goes wrong in there, I wanted to see. Cause at this point in time, I didn't know if something would go wrong. Uh, I can tell you right now, nothing does go wrong. And like I said, we'll go to the live in a little bit and I'll explain some of the nuances of things that can go wrong and the way I stopped it. And I'll explain to you how I tried to do the leaf crushing system um, and why it didn't work. But here you can see, just I'm just kind of filling around doing the last bits. Uh, here the redstone wasn't reaching the top, so I built like a little repeater system to get it up there. And this is the last couple moments. And here the tree farm is basically done guys, so that was the entire system. It did take quite a few hours, but like I said, I did do, uh, like play with, like I did use the farm and I got myself double chest and double chest full of wood. Obviously after collecting all the saplings from it. But guys, let's quickly go to the game itself live and let me show you some things um, if you guys do want to build this. Alright guys, for the first time in two episodes, we're actually live in game. Um, so yeah, you could probably already see a couple changes. So I made the redstone super compact here it's literally only like one block thing and then i removed the little case around it just because i thought it made it look too bulky and i think i like seeing the redstone a little bit at um i added a little like step ladder there because i kept getting stuck on the chests and i added a second duper i think i already said that but i have the one duper and then i have the second duper just so one blows up here and another one blows up here so i can get all the wood and also, very importantly, I ended up pushing this piston to back, and then that one to back, um, just because over here, when blocks would grow here by accident, it would be too much for the pistons to push, because right now, it in the old design, if a block grew here, it, this would be the maximum push. It can only push, I'm just gonna throw out a number, I don't know, like 12 blocks. 
this would be the 12th block so basically if something was here the piston would be at 13 and I wouldn't be able to push it so I threw both of them two back so if something does grow here it can still get pushed and you can see here this is the same design as we left off in uh, the time lapse now for like three hours I did play around with it and I also compacted the redstone here I did play around with putting pistons on this side and this side uh, so you can see here to crush these leaves but it ended up causing too much trouble because and real quick before I explain that I did add obsidian here and obsidian there just so uh, pistons can't push obsidian so the blocks can't go past here very important note you have to put obsidian there or the the blocks might get pushed past also here uh, so I tried putting pistons there and there but the problem was the pistons would push but then let's just say if it was leaves they would get crushed but if it was two wood blocks like on the left and the right one of the sides would get pushed so basically all of the redstone and pistons here would get pushed one and then it would break and then it would just cause a whole mess so basically after one or two uses of it the entire redstone system would break now again if i had um this dirt and then two rings i could make a system where like it gets pushed left right forward back left right and then nothing would ever get jammed or stuck and then all of these would be crushed but in this case i did only build one ring around so um yep i did work for like three hours trying to do that and not gonna lie i was trying to record it in case it worked but uh, i forgot to record it so i'm kind of happy it didn't work because it was kind of a failure but anyway so just whatever happened on the time lapse that's basically where we ended off because i tried testing but it didn't work so let me give you a quick fly around guys so this is the kind of the final look the area the plant the storage the two pushers and the collection system well, let me show you my yield so far so i think these chests are empty but this is what i've gotten so far so one double chest two double chests three double chests and this is maybe just from one or two nights of bay of king so i think it is pretty good and real quick i can show you guys the tnt duping system if i can fly up there so basically, I just built a second one. Nothing too complicated. I already showed you guys how to build the first one. So this is the first one. I just built the second one right next to it with a little bit of a delay. So yeah, you can see here one, two, and they get dropped, and then they go boom. Now, um, just I just need like three more seconds just for updates. A couple of things that I played around with. So um, I did do a little bit of work on the basement. You can already see. So the entire thing here, not the entire thing because there's still some spots, but I tried to lay the entire thing with smooth stone brick and you can see all the collection systems that we built. So that's the bamboo, the, sh uh, the melon, uh, the pumpkin, the sugar cane, and the cactus. I tried to do a little design with the cactus and the thing. So basically these are all chests and whenever I think the second chest gets filled, the light will go on. Um, I lost a lot of material during this. so. In this case, only this light is on, indicating that there's cactus here. So I'll probably go through this next episode. Next episode, we'll probably do a lot of decorating here. And the last quick update. So you guys remember we have this hole. Well, I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have a second hole here so we can actually get from the bottom just directly outside it. So instead of like uh, flying through the stairs or coming back up here, we can just directly jump into the basement. So now we have like kind of like three levels that we can get between them. Whew, that is a lot of talking. Alright guys, so I think that is it for now. Like I said, we'll work down here more. Next episode, we'll do some more decorating. Because this is going to be like our mass storage area for most of our farms. But guys, um, my voice is kind of tired. And that was, um, yeah, a good bit of explaining. But today was a lot of fun. I'm really glad we got the tree farm working. Um, this is something that I wanted to do for quite a while. And I even did it for my own design. Obviously, like the double piston extender was built by someone else but you know it depends how you utilize things so guys thanks for watching if you did enjoy make sure to like comment as for the channel and i will see you guys later god bless and goodbye